What is up and welcome to another episode of Draft is in Session. Will Decker, your host here. I'm joined by the main man, the madman, Mr. Jamal Madney. What is going on, my brother? Will the thrill. Great to do this with you as always. Excited to dive in. What an interesting week with all the all-star games. You know, so many hidden gems emerging and I'm excited to, to break that down with you. This is one of the most critical weeks for the draft in general. You're seeing player stocks rise and fall throughout this week as the two major games that all-star games that these players can play in are occurring right now. We got the Shrine Bowl that's been practicing for the last week going to be occurring on Thursday. Make sure to tune into that. And then the Senior Bowl. The Senior Bowl is probably the most coveted event of the all-star games for these players heading into the draft. That's going to be occurring on Saturday. We've got some practice reports to go over, things like that. We got some interesting players from Los Angeles making big time noise. Spoiler alert, a lot of them are in the blue and yellow for the Bruins. Uh, we're going to be talking about players that potentially fit for the Chargers and Rams that we have seen through these practices uh, throughout the week. But first, we got to go to our new sponsor, Jamal. It is a really cool one at that. We are excited to announce that we have partnered with a number of different sports books to give you the best options for all of your sports betting needs. For our California listeners, BetUS.com is the perfect place to bet on the Rams to win the Super Bowl in LVI. If you live in a betting state, then be sure to check out deals with DraftKings, FanDuel, or BetMGM. In order to get our special podcast name deal, you have to click on the link located in the description uh, to go to HTTPS link tree that we will have located at the bottom. Win big with these amazing promotions. Remember, with our special draft is in session deal, that is what you will have to click on. Jamal, I just feel bad uh, for some of these players at the Shrine Bowl because they have to guard Kyle Phillips at the end of the day. And Kyle Phillips, I mean, this is a guy that we have been high on. It's been no secret. We do the Bruin Bible. Jamal is probably the most frequent guest at this point. He's basically a co-host. We go on and on about how underrated Kyle Phillips is. And it's so rewarding to see just how much praise he's finally getting after being underrated for so long. This guy has led the Bruins in catches for three years, has made big play after big play, kind of an unsung hero to the UCLA offense time and time again. You know, he had 10 touchdowns this past year, two career punt returns, really made some huge plays in the Stanford LSU game. USC game, he caught two more touchdowns. This week, though, um, he has taken it to another level. And it is very, very exciting to see. Kyle Phillips has been the best player at the position so far this week. Has been a guy that has been an absolute game changer. PFF had this word. And he's impressed with his route running and footwork while holding up against tight coverage. The 5'11", 186-pound receiver has been PFF's highest graded player at the position during practices so far. Uh, we had Bill Smith for NFL.com comparing him to Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. I mean, this is a guy that is the king of the modern slot receiver. He had 100-plus catches for the Raiders so far this year. Jamal, he has been tearing up practice. Every clip I see, he is burning DBs for big gains and touchdowns. How much has this week helped out? our dude Kyle Phillips. Well, Will, I'm rocking my, my UCLA fleece in honor of Kyle Phillips for this episode, given his exceptional performance. He's helped himself uh, enormously. And I think Pac-12-wise, 12, you know, Pac and certainly Southern California-wise, we understood what Kyle Phillips brought to the table. A professional wide receiver, so smooth in his breaks and his in his cuts, understanding the nuances of the slot position, and then having these terrific hands and a toughness uh, to get those tough intermediate yards that is so necessary to keep the sticks moving. And it's so great that now that he's been put against more national competition with more national media, you know the the results stay consistent. And he's getting the notoriety that he deserves. Again, you know, I love the Renfro comparison. I think that he is going to have a Cole Beasley, Edelman, Wes Welker type of career. And it is so important in today's modern NFL where so often the short to intermediate passing game is what is replacing the traditional run game, right? And those are the yards that you're trying to eat up to not only move the sticks, but also stay in front of the sticks. 
And that's what Phillips brings to the table. And when you look at a team, I had mentioned this to you earlier, Will, when you look at a team like Kansas City, the Chiefs, four straight AFC championship games, a dynasty of one, if you will, right now, what is their big problem? It's when teams go too high and then a man shell underneath and Mahomes just can't seem to crack that code. And primarily because Tyreek Hill is, is getting, you know, shaved off by, by those high safeties and there's just not enough room for Kelsey to operate. Can you imagine Kyle Phillips in a Kansas City Chiefs uniform? It's not really hyperbole to say, you know, that match could maybe be the most important match in the NFL next year. And that's just one example. But Phillips is going to make any team very, very happy with his performance. 59 catches, 739 yards, 10 touchdowns. But I think what also separates him, Will, is this ability to get open in the red zone. Time and again, what we've been hearing from, you know, the game and and the media out there is in these third and eight from the 10, in these, you know, third and 10 from the 18, in these difficult type of red zone situations where precision really matters, route running really matters, that's where Kyle Phillips is making his money. And how valuable is that, especially when we've seen the NFL playoffs where every game has been decided by seemingly three points. The difference between red zone touchdowns and red zone field goals is the difference between going home in the first round and potentially going to the Super Bowl. And that is what Phillips does uh, above everything else. And so just thrilled for the kid um, that he's getting this notoriety and he's going to make an NFL team very happy. I couldn't agree more. And Kyle Phillips, he does a special skill that I think every team needs. And it's not the sexy home run hitters like you were saying with Kansas City. You know, you got Tyree Kill arguably the best deep threat in football. Uh, you know, Travis Kelsey, big game tight end, maybe the king of the yak up there at the position with a guy like George Kittle. Even McCole Hardman, deep threat in its finest form. This guy is a top-end speed guy. He's going to outrace corners. The thing they are missing, critically, is just that third and seven, you need eight yards. I need a guy who can run a little in or an out route and can make a play, a la the Wes Welker, a la the Edelman Amendola. It's actually a shame that Brady retired the other day because this guy, Kyle Phillips, this is exactly what he's been looking for his entire career. You know, the little slot guy that can make plays. And you brought up a phenomenal point. His ability to separate is something that I knew was very, he was very skilled at. But watching it on tape this week with all players that will be playing on Sunday, it is clear that this guy has separation ability at that next level, that 1% of separation ability for his size and skill set. So Kyle Phillips, if you can be that third down guy, move the chains, Cole Beasley, you name it. You know, I think this guy can be an absolute game changer. And, you know, I think coming in this week, I had him as like, you know, maybe an early fifth round pick, late fourth rounder. If this continues to trend, I think he could be in the top 100 picks in the draft in general, given that this position is so critical to a lot of these offenses success moving forward Kyle Phillips has been an absolute stud and some guy we have to continue to look for next guy I want to talk about also a UCLA Bruin and that is my man Quinn Lake and Quinn Lake you know it's one thing to be a phenomenal safety and play the back end but the way he has really impressed this week is he's showing his ability to potentially be a nickel corner And I think a lot of the draft process is showing how versatile you can be because a lot of it is you may be in the same position group. For instance, you may have a tackle that may want to play guard or center because that helps them at the next level. Your availability is everything in the NFL. It may have a chance to get you on the field. And Quinn Lake in man-to-man coverage, you know, playing these one-on-ones has really impressed. Multiple pass breakups, a couple interceptions. I mean, our boy Matt Alkire. Coming out again, Quinn Lake with another PBU. If you're going to catch the ball, better tuck it. The UCLA guys are on fire in Vegas. That is what he was saying. Quinn Lake was making plays all over the field. You know, this guy's NFL lineage too, Jamal. Give me your thoughts on Quinn Lake because I think this guy undoubtedly has raised his stock to go to the next level. Will, totally agree. And, you know, you and I had some of these conversations in the fall. And there's really two ways to close on separation when you are playing coverage. One is through closing speed, and the other is through closing length and wingspan. 
And Quinton Lake is absolutely exceptional at the ladder. When you look at his wingspan, when you look at his long arms, you just don't see folks uh, at the safety position as well as at the corner position that are kind of built as long and lean as he is. And that's what makes things very deceptive when you're a wide receiver. When you've got a guy and you've kind of gotten inside leverage and he's sort of on your hip, you can sort of anticipate the closing speed and what you need to do in terms of technique with arm fighting, arm bars, moving your hips inside. But what you can't really prepare for is the length of a guy just being able to kind of go over the top of your shoulder and breaking up that pass. And that's essentially what Lake does in a very unique way and something that we saw time and again, not just in the 2021 season, but prior to that. The only question with Quentin Lake over the course of his UCLA career was health and availability. And those issues were more kind of random injuries that he had than anything that was necessarily chronic or something that was consistent. And so very high on Quentin Lake. The other thing that is so significant about him, Will, is the college experience that he had playing secondary at UCLA this year, where the UCLA secondary was very poor. And as a result of that, he had to make up for a lot of things where, you know, the Knights and the Shaws and some of the the Cam Johnsons sort of, you know, where they struggled a little bit in pass coverage, he almost had to sort of quarterback that defense from a perimeter standpoint. And I think that prepared him very well to see the different types of receivers, the different body types, the different speeds. And it just kind of gave him a football education in a very unique way this year where not only did he have to sort of impose his will physically in terms of helping off of some of those blown coverages, but also better understand how the back end of a defense looks. I think he's going to be an absolute steal for any team that needs secondary help, and there's quite a few of them. I couldn't agree any more than what you just said about our boy Quinn Lake. You know, this guy, I mean, if he was healthy throughout his college career, in my heart of hearts, I believe this guy is a top three-round pick. And I think that is going to like bring him down a little bit in the draft, the injury history there. But I had him as a fifth round pick coming into this week. He's already risen that to about a fourth round pick in my eyes. Continue to make plays ball out. Yeah, beginning of the fourth round pick is still a very valuable pick in my eyes, given how many positions there are in the NFL. If you can get Quinn Lake at the top of the fourth round, you got to be feeling pretty good about yourself because this guy – He plays his best in the biggest moments. We've talked about this many times. This guy is a gamer. Just turn on the film with this guy. We didn't see a lot of him on the field, but when we did, that guy's a pro. You you know it when you see it. Quinn Lake has always been that guy. And if you can get that guy at the top of the fourth round, that's a potential starting level safety. And I mean that when I say that with Quinn Lake, if he can reach his ceiling. Last guy I want to talk to about in the Shrine Bowl, uh, Madman. We have an SC Trojan. Not many SC Trojans playing in the Shrine Bowl or the Senior Bowl. But Keontae Ingram made some serious noise out here this week. And uh, I got Cecil Lammy, the uh, DenverFan.com writer, wrote this about Keontae Ingram. Arguably the best player of the day. This was on Monday of this past week. Regardless of position, was USC running back Keontae Ingram. He gets a powerful stride as a runner and almost punishes the ground as he explodes after the handoff or after he makes a break. Ingram has instincts as a runner and certainly knows how to set up defenders in the open field. This guy was impressing at the running back position, Jamal. And he's a guy that played at two premium programs in Texas and USC. The thing that I like about Keontae Ingram is he's a versatile running back. This guy had more than 20 catches in three of his four seasons in college. This guy can be a guy you can throw out there and, you know, have faith in that this guy can make a play on third and long on a check down to get you a first down in the open field. I also like how he doesn't have much tread on his tires. The most carries he's had in his career was 156, which was this past year at USC and nearly ran for a thousand yards, nearly got to double digit touchdowns. The talent's there for this guy. And, you know, for my money, I'm not the biggest, you know, uh, believer in drafting a running back high. I think the only way I would do that is if you can guarantee me Derrick Henry like success or a healthy Christian McCaffrey. But if I'm in like the late fifth, early sixth round, and I definitely need a running back, why not Keontae Ingram, Jamal? 
Will, you're absolutely right. And what I love about Ingram, you know, he's he's of the best kept secret in many ways, number one, because of the type of season that USC had. They were, you know, shockingly enough, they weren't really on TV nationally very often, a lot of late games. So he's he's a hidden gem. And, you know, how long that lasts now with, with Lincoln Riley and USC, uh, probably not much longer. But from an Ingram standpoint, you know, you mentioned his experiences, both at Texas and USC. He reminds me so much of Cedric Benson. You know, he, he's, you know, he's got the feet. Um, you know, he has that ability, like we talked about earlier, to kind of set up defenders. He's a violent runner, not afraid of contact. He's got that burst. He's got quickness. There's so many things that you can do with him. And what I like about Ingram is whether it's third and one or third and 11, you can have him on the field. Uh, you know, he can be uh, the bell ringer to get you that tough goal, goal line and short yardage situation uh, type running back. But he's also a guy like you mentioned, you can pop him out a little bit, check downs, the screen game. You know, I think he's an underrated blocker as well. Um, there's just so much that you can do with Ingram. And it's great to see uh, that he's getting the, the notoriety that he deserves. Again, the running backs are the most commoditized position in the NFL. But the exception to that, especially kind of late round, is if you don't have a specialist, but rather a guy that can do a lot of different things. And with Ingram... He's got the burst. He's kind of got some home run ability. He can get you the short yardage game. He can get you things out of the passing game. And so for the right team that kind of needs that complementary piece, in addition to some of the other things that they have going on, he can be a great addition. But I love the physicality that he runs with, not afraid of contact. He can run around you. He can run through you. He can outrun you in certain cases as well. And so I think Ingram is going to be one of those guys where it's going to be late because he's a running back. But even if he goes undrafted, that could even be the greatest scenario of all because then he could pick the situation that works best for him and really set himself up for success. Really happy to see it for Ingram considering the type of season that SC had. Absolutely. And, you know, I think with the running back position as a whole, I may not be high on them drafting them in the first three rounds. But the way the NFL is currently constructed, the day of the three down running back is probably over. Just being yeah. honest, you know, when you can have a running back trio, maybe even five running backs on the roster that really receive time and, you know, get the carries they're looking for. Keontae Ingram is definitely one of those guys that could fit into the mix in a lot of these teams and locker rooms, given his skill set and ability. Keontae Ingram, maybe not worth a top three round pick, but that's a guy I'm looking at at the end of the draft. If he's still on the board, it's a no-brainer for me to take a guy like him with his pass-catching ability and his ability to get out on the open field. I want to move on. I want to go right into Senior Bowl talk. And, Jamal, it's been a fun week. We've got some UCLA players down there. Uh, Greg Dulcich made a couple big plays on the outside. Not a lot of talk about him just yet, just because I think it was only the first day of practice. But we expect our boy Greg to have a huge week down in Mobile. The guy I want to talk about that had a ton of tape going on and even some pancakes that I sent you uh, via text message this morning, our guy, Otito Ogbonia. And this guy was a baller, six foot three, 326 pounds. Um, you know, I think we knew about him as a run stuffer, but the videos of him in the one-on-one -on -one shows how, much, how dominant of a pass rusher this guy could potentially be. I think he's only been stopped once in pass rush and – you know, I want to, I'm going to save the guy who stopped him for a little later when we talk about Chargers and Rams. But Otito Ogbania, this guy, it's a no brainer to take this guy, maybe even a third or fourth round pick. If you're fearful of the run, this guy's going to take at least two, maybe even three players at a time if it comes down to it. What did you see from Otito Ogbania, our UCLA Bruin? Will, no question about it. Ogbania, you know, he showed flashes of, of greatness at UCLA this year. 29 tackles, two sacks. He's 6'4", 326. Uh, you know, he's one of those prospects that in the right situation, kind of a la Pittsburgh, a la Baltimore, some of these more uh, physical North teams um, that have a really nice lineage of defensive line play, he could be an incredible addition because – you know, you're not sure yet 
what you're going to get. Is he going to be a traditional nose? Is he going to play traditional three technique? I think he can do a little bit of both. The question, um, I think where he shines is the bull rush and the ability to explode off the line. Yeah. And I think that's what we saw in the senior bull. His just his bull rushing ability, his explosiveness, his sort of straight line ability, I think is just off the charts. And I think that's what creates sort of those wow moments in the senior bulls. And so his ability to play in gaps, you know, plug in those holes from a run stopping perspective could be immensely valuable at the NFL level. I think where the next step in his evolution, the reason why he is been sort of a hidden gem and not necessarily the difference between him and maybe the first round guys and the second round guys is he struggles a little bit with change of direction. When he's, when he's not sure where he needs to go or when he needs to kind of have some judgment on where the play is developing, there's some misdirection, that's where he's a little bit more unsure of himself and he can sort of get swallowed up. Um, and then he becomes a little bit upright, uh, upright at the pad level. And then that's where, you know, things become a bit of a struggle for him. But in that right situation, those are all teachable things. I think you have a really gem of a prospect. The other thing I really like about him, in addition to the explosiveness and the straight line sort of bull rush ability, is he knows how to kind of get small too. And, and sort of that path of least resistance to either beat his man or be able to get into the backfield to disrupt a running back, to be able to disrupt the timing of the quarterback. He's really good. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to believe to say this, that a man as large as 326 at 6'4 knows how to get small as well. And so I think his explosiveness, his agility at the straight line level, I think is absolutely elite. I think the where his game can go even to the next level is if he can sort of start understanding how he can redirect his body given certain plays, you're talking about a really significant NFL contributor. And so he's, he's a gem, a diamond in the rough, knows three technique. He's got it all. And so I'm really excited about where he's going to go. I think it's weird to say athletic when you're talking about a guy that's 326 pounds. But this guy, the strength and speed combination he possesses at that size, it's in the 1%. This guy yeah. is you know, one of the very few out there. He reminds me of an X-Men character, uh, the Juggernaut. It's just like this guy is going to run right through you, you know, go through walls, do whatever it takes, you know, to get to the villain or the quarterback for that matter. That's Otito Ogbania. That's my guy for the draft. I think whoever can get him in maybe the third, fourth round, I mean, that's a steal at that position. I, I'm a 49ers fan. I hope my Niners take a look at our guy, Otito Ogbania. Um the other guys I want to talk about, and this is where we kind of venture off because we've kind of checked all the boxes for the UCLA and SC guys. You know, it's been only one day of practice at the Senior Bowl, but the guy that has really stood out to me, and I know you're a fan of him as well, Jermaine Johnson. And this guy, we're talking about a six foot five, 262 pound dude. And I watched not only his tape, but some of the practice clips. Not only can this guy beat you by the bull rush, he was throwing spin moves on these tackles, beating them handily. It's almost a guy that's too talented. Like, he doesn't know how much talent he has in his arsenal. And, I mean, he left it all at the field. He's a former Georgia recruit, transferred to Florida State. I mean, this guy had 70 tackles, 18 tackles for a loss, 12 sacks. And what I really noticed about this guy is his lateral speed and awareness – you know, it's one thing to get sacks as a defensive end, but 18 tackles for a loss on top of that. He is reading screen plays. He is going, you know, following the running back's eyes. And I, I swear to God, I think this guy can run a low four fives or a high four fives, low four sixes at 262 pounds. This guy is a freak of nature. And the play that stood out to me on tape, it's Clemson, DJ Ugali. He's playing against – a Clemson O-line that has, you know, probably five guys all headed to the next level, given how successful Dabo Sweeney has been in his tenure there. Jermaine Johnson came off the edge, beat his lineman, just pushing him back, stripped the ball, picked it up, and ran in the end zone in one play. And we want to talk about disruption, like we were just talking about with Otito Ogbania. That is a level of destruction where it looks so effortless 
that he just ruined an entire game plan without even trying. And the the team that comes to mind for me, especially since they do have a first round pick, Johnson is slated for potentially a late first round pick, maybe even higher if he continues to ball at Mobile. Chargers need help in pass rush. And Boza is among maybe the top five defensive ends in all of football. He definitely is for my money. But they really struggled finding that other pass rusher on the other side. Can you imagine if you had a Johnson next to a Boza? That is a world-class wrecking crew uh, to make sure that the Chargers are getting after the Mahomes is in the division, the Derek Carrs, who knows, maybe even Aaron Rodgers comes down there. Pass rush is going to be a premium. What do you think about Jermaine Johnson, and do you like the fit for the Chargers if he's there at 17? Will, I, I'll start with the fit for the Chargers. I absolutely love it because the Chargers need all the help they can get. You know, you talk about pass rush complementing on the other side of Bosa. You also talk about their putrid run defense. And so yeah. they, need, they need all kinds of help at the line play. And what jumped out at me with Johnson was the versatility. I mean, I turned the tape on and it was like that, you know, that old scene in Jerry Maguire where it was like, you had me at hello. I mean, where, where has this guy been? You know, we, we had a whole segment on defensive line play. And we talked about Hutchinson and Thibodeau. We didn't even and, get to this guy. Oh, man, I mean, this guy's tape rivals anybody else it's it's absolutely unreal and the thing that kind of stood out for me was speed as an edge rusher yeah. he had the ability to bull rush he had this in, he had incredible feet where he could start and then cut to the inside he could shed guys off in the run game he had the ability to you know shed guys off in the jet sweep game um you know he he sort of had feet on the inside he had the spin moves like you talked about it was just anything and everything the guy could do and you know he almost sort of he's the defensive equivalent of Jameson Williams in in a sense oh, right yeah. Williams couldn't make the Ohio State wide receiving room goes to Alabama becomes a star think about what Georgia is defensively that this yeah. guy couldn't make it into the Georgia defensive line room goes to Florida State and has 70 tackles? 70 tackles? That's 70 insane. tackles for defensive end. Like that. Between solo and share, 12 sacks. The guy is absolutely sort of unreal. He can do it all. And I think that's what really uh, sort of strikes me is the polish, the versatility, the ability to play the pass game. Because honestly, Will, a lot of the guys we're looking at from a D tackle position, they're specialists. Okay. So you got guys who are pure pass rushers, you got pure run stoppers. This guy, between his speed, his edge rushing, the bull rushing, the feet, the spin move, the shedding, this guy, you can put him, you know, in the pass game, in the run game, he can really do it all. I was blown away by this guy. Absolutely. 17, you talk about the Chargers, you know, the Chargers potentially could go from a fringe playoff team to a serious contender in the AFC with this kid. The only fear is, is this kid even going to last at 17? Because this guy's stock is shooting up, you know, faster than Bitcoin right now. I mean, it's out of control. This guy is a sensation. And the name that came to mind, Jamal, because I know you're a football head like I am, Dwight Freeney. This is yeah. the guy that reminds me of Dwight Freeney. And he has the variety of spin moves. He's almost unfair athletically as a defensive end. He could either be your first guy you want off the bus. I mean, this guy looks like he's got 2% body fat at 262. He runs like a gazelle for his size. It makes no sense. This guy looks like he could be 215 pounds. But you look at his size, he goes, it's just not fair. It's not fair. And if the Chargers really want to make a difference in the league, if he's on the board and you pass on Jermaine Johnson, after what I just saw, that is a catastrophic mistake moving forward. Madman, I know you had a couple other dudes that you circled for the senior bowl that we've kind of gone in depth on. Give me some of the guys you were thinking of uh, that could make a, a big impact either in the NFL or for the Rams and chargers, if they're available. You know, there's a couple of guys here, Will, that, you know, are, are interesting to me. And, and I think some of the things that I sort of saw, um, you know, I think the beauty of the senior bowl, the shrine game, so often we have folks that, you know, transfer from one school to another and, you know, they sort of get lost in the shuffle as a result of that. And that's what really kind of stuck out to me is, is guys either in, in FCS or guys who transferred from FCS to FBS 
and really did some amazing things. I think, you know, a couple names come to mind. One is, you know, we'll start with kind of a blue blood. Channing Tindall, uh, linebacker, Georgia. Uh, Love this kid on tape. Uh, 67 tackles uh, this year, five and a half sacks on that vaunted Georgia defense. He was a hero in the national championship game with eight tackles and a sack. Had an exceptional game against Tennessee on film, eight tackles, three sacks. I love this kid's just straight line speed, his out of control and lateral quickness. And especially when you're potentially in a division with a lot of bubble screens, a lot of spread concepts from a lateral standpoint, Think NFC West. You know, this kid could really be a big difference maker, um, not just necessarily on the Rams side defensively, but even to sort of match up with the Rams. Um, and I really like what I saw with this kid in terms of his straight line ability. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, there were two names that I really liked. One was Pierre Strong, running back from South Dakota State. Uh, this kid, you know, 5'11", 205. When you look at the tape, He's basically two inches shorter and 15 pounds slimmer than Brees Hall. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the feet, when you look as, at his ability to make cuts, when you look at his ability to kind of read and, and wait for holes to emerge, smooth runner, he actually, his running style is very much Eric Dickerson. Where you know Ooh, Eric was yeah. always so straight when he ran. You know there was always that joke where you could put a soda can on Eric Dickerson's head while he ran, and nothing would spill off the can. And Pierre Strong reminds me of that. And considering that a guy like Brees Hall, who you know twenty-four straight games with a touchdown FBS yeah. record, probably the top running back prospect out there. When you watch the film, there's really no difference between a Pierre Strong and a Brees Hall. And I can understand why he's getting so much buzz because you can use him again in the run game, a great pass receiver. And ironically enough, the guy threw for six touchdown passes at San Diego State in a, in a variety of trick plays. Really like what I saw out of him. The other guy I liked was Samari Toure. Wide yeah. receiver in Nebraska. Uh, you know, he had 46 catches, 898 yards, five touchdowns with Nebraska this year. But two years ago, he was probably the best receiver in all of college football when he was at FCS Montana, where he had nearly 1,500 yards and 13 touchdowns. What I like about this kid is he's one of those rare receivers where it's all three levels uh, that he can make an impact. He can make an impact in the short game, the quick out routes, kind of a la Kyle Phillips, the quick bubble screen. He can get you those tough 15 to 20 yards on some of those ins, those skinny posts, those outs. And he can be a bit of a home run threat as well, where he had plenty of receptions north of 30 yards. Really like what I saw out of that kid. And then I'll leave you kind of last name, Will, with Jelani Woods, tight end out of Virginia. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, 6'7", 265. I mean, holy cow, you turn the film on it was almost disorienting because it's like watching a defensive lineman go out and make catches, you know, and this guy's very soft hands, I think can be a really big factor again in the red zone on some of those seam routes up the middle uh, for a variety of teams. But I really, really like Tyndall um, for the Rams uh, as someone, you know, that second level of defense uh, that could really help. But those were some of the gems that I saw. I love all those responses, man. Tyndall is a guy that I could see thriving not only as a linebacker playing downhill, but he has the speed at 6'2", 230 to play pass coverage because he's just yeah. a freak athlete at that size. And he was overshadowed by N'Kobe Dean. And yeah. to put it in perspective for me as someone as a 49ers fan, Patrick Willis was our guy in like the mid-2010s, early you know 2000s. But we had another guy in Navarro Bowman who didn't necessarily get the shine that was deserved. But, boy, he was almost as valuable as a guy like Patrick Willis. And, and that's why a crushing injury in, in that Seahawks NFC Championship oh. game and just wasn't the same after that. He was a stud. Absolute stud. And, you know, it's been a long line of disappointing Niners losses in my lifetime. But uh, Tyndall, Tyndall is that guy, man. And I really see him making an impact. And I'm glad you said Rams. Chargers are looking for linebacker help, too. Yeah, I know they got Kaiser White there, a guy that's been able to make some plays. But 
Uh, Channing Tindall, man, this guy could help out a lot of different teams. Rams need that linebacker help. So do the Chargers. I think that'd be a good pick. Speaking of running backs, Pierre Strong, you know, we've talked time and time again about how the Rams have not been able to find that running back. And we thought Cam Akers was the guy, but boy, I was nervous after that Tampa Bay game if I was a Rams fan. Costly fumbles and big moments, and I know he came back from the big injury. They tried it with Daryl Henderson. Never really was the guy. Sony Michelle. You know, there's flashes here and there. It's just not consistent. I think if you can take a late round pick on Pierre Strong, yeah. that would be a home run. I like that guy a lot. Um, and then to the tour A pick, man. I mean, I think this guy, and granted, they're very different players, but when you dominate at that level like Torre did, to put into perspective with you know some Rams fans, you know, Cooper Cup was a division two guy and right. he made the jump seamlessly. Torre's got two inches on Cooper Cup, bigger guy, bigger frame, probably a little bit faster. Get him in the right system. He can clearly play football. Uh, I like what I see from him. He's been having a great week at the Shrine Bowl as well. I got two names for you, Jamal. One's at the Senior Bowl, and one is at the Shrine Bowl. My guy on the offensive line. And I think it's hard to find a badass among all badasses because football is the ultimate badass sport, right? My guy, Zion Johnson, and this guy started 37 games for Boston College. He's undersized dude. He's six foot two, you know, 315 pounds, six foot three. I mean, they say six foot three, but he's six, two and a half, really. This guy is doing one on ones, and I pay extra close attention to the UCLA guys, Otito Ogbania. This guy is having his way with just about every tackle going back there. And Zion Johnson gets in stance for the one-on-one -on -one and holds this guy up like it was nothing. And he is undersized by a mile compared to the rest of the tackles. This guy played tackle and was all ACC, which is not, you know, a shrimp conference. You have to play the Clemsons. Miami's had some very talented edge, you know, rushers there yeah. in recent years. You know, Russo being the latest of a bunch. You know, this guy was battle-tested and came out on the other side. The thing I love about this guy, too – undersized, willing to go to guard the last two days of the senior bowl, Jamal. He has been the last guy on the field training as a center. It was raining today. Everyone wanted to get inside. It was miserable conditions. Last guy on the field snapping hundred plus balls for the scouts there. Zion Johnson is my guy. And I know, you know, when you look at teams, we talked about, you know, the Rams, Andrew Whitworth, by the way, I want to get this off with Andrew Whitworth. We talk about Brady all the time doing what he did at 45. What yeah. Whitworth is doing at the left tackle position, for my money, might be more impressive than what Brady has done, given that he's going against elite edge talent each and every week, the best of the best, and he's 39, 40 years old. It makes no sense. No sense at all. But my guy Zion Johnson, to get back, I had to do that tangent on Whitworth because he's a boss. But Zion Johnson, this dude is special, and I'm really excited to see him. Have you checked out any Zion Johnson uh, at all? Will, I love what I see out of Zion Johnson. The, the two things that come to mind, one is versatility. And, you know, that's kind of been a key word, right, that we've sort of – that's been a key theme of today's episode where that's really what you're looking for at the NFL across a number of different positions. His ability, his knowledge of the game to play multiple positions. And then what I love is the center of gravity. His center of gravity is in the legs. It's in the lower body. And that really is the key to great offensive linemen because that's how you're able to out leverage different body types. That's how you're able to deal with, you know, the slender pass rushers, the, the thicker uh, run st stuffers. And he has this incredible ability, his low center of gravity. And the guy's a leader. You know, Will, we talked about it. You can put him at center and kind of run your offense, run your snap count with your quarterback. You can put him out at guard and tackle as well. You know who he reminds me of? And we haven't given oh. a lot of love to UCLA, not as much to SC, Sam Baker. And Sam oh, Baker, yeah. incredible offensive lineman in the NFL. There was always the, the nickname that he had, Sam Baker, touchdown maker. That's what Johnson gives me. He gives me the Sam Baker vibes both in terms of mentally, his knowledge of the game, his technique, his low center of gravity, and his versatility. This guy's an absolute stud. And if he's going to have any, if he's going to be sort of anything close to Sam Baker, 
uh, teams are going to really need to look at him long and hard uh, because he's going to make the Rams and any other team really successful. It's just the brute strength he brings. When you are pull, pushing back six foot five, six foot six defensive ends consistently at six, two and a half, yeah. you have to be just a different breed of a human being. And Zion Johnson checks those boxes. The last guy I got for you is the highest ranked player by PFF in the Shrine Bowl. Um, and it's Kellen Deesh. This guy was a Texas A&M transfer to Arizona State. Prototypical size at six foot seven, 300 pounds, but it's not just the size that has NFL scouts saying this guy could be a high third round pick. Deesh, he only allowed eight pressures all year. This guy really, uh, you know, was not tested at all. And a lot of that is credited due to how much of a good lineman Kellen Deesh is on the left-hand side. He's definitely a tackle. I don't think he would be a guy that you can move in on the inside, but you can plug him in at left or right side. And you got to be feeling pretty confident about what this guy's done. He's the 10th ranked tackle for PFF. He's had a phenomenal week at the Shrine Bowl. I don't, the first day he was never beaten in one-on-one -on -one reps. This guy has just made an impact and has furthered his draft stock moving forward. Kellen Deesh is that guy for me. I don't know if you're familiar on him, Jamal. Are, uh, do you know anything about Kellen Deesh? Yeah, well, I do. And, you know, number one, I mean, just another athlete, you know, to come first out of Texas A&M and then get plugged at Arizona State. I mean, Jimbo's doing an outstanding job at, at Texas A&M. The second thing I will say is with, with Deesh is, you know, he's going to make himself a lot of money with, you know, the performance this week. Obviously, um, his his ability, I agree with you, it's it's definitely out at the edge. He's not kind of an interior lineman. But you're talking about 95% of the quarterbacks in the NFL are still light, are still right-handers. And so anytime you can get consistent blindside protection, that is always going to be very treasured at the NFL level. And so I would kind of keep him on that left side if I were an NFL team because of his technique, because of what I'm seeing uh, in terms of his sort of physical nature. He's a little raw. Uh, but I think that's, you know, that's what a prospect is uh, by and large. And I think in the right situation, protecting that blind side is going to be huge. Uh, I like what I see. And the one-on-one -on -one reps this week kind of, you know, fortified my belief in him moving forward as he has just done such a strong job of showing why he was the number one guy coming in this week. Usually it has a target on your back, but he's just proven it through and through that he is among the top three or four guys out there. Madman, this is so much fun. Um, draft is in session. Uh, we're going to be doing these more after the Super Bowl week. We're going to have a crazy week at LAFB next week. You guys got to be following along. We are going to be on Radio Row next week, me and the Madman. This guy's going to be my interview partner out there. We're going to try to bring you as many cool interviews as possible. I do know, spoiler, we got some cool ones coming up. Maybe a guy named Darren Sproles is going to be talking to us at some point. Uh, Jamal, I mean, even Ryan was telling me we got Instagram sensation Dan Rue coming on. This guy, one of the best dancers on Instagram. Great comedy video. He's going to be talking to LAFB. We got many more surprises coming out through the week, so stay in tune for that. And we got way more fun guests coming. We can't exactly say who they are, but tune in, man. We are going to have one of the best draft shows around when all is said and done. So keep listening and keep tuning in. Draft is in session. We are out.